Welcome to the opening convocation of the 2012-2013 academic year, Bethany College's 132nd. Welcome to our new faculty and to our new staff. Welcome back returning students. Welcome to our new students, both freshmen and transfers. As we begin the new academic year, we greet 612 students who join us from 29 states, one U.S. territory, and 16 international countries. We also welcome the class of 2016. Now let me share, courtesy of Beloit College, the mindset of this class's worldview. This year's entering class of 2016 was born into cyberspace, and they have therefore measured their output in the fundamental practices of life, bits, bites, and bods. They have come to political consciousness during a time of increasing doubts about America's future and are entering college bombarded by questions about jobs and the value of college. They have never needed an actual airline ticket, a set of bound encyclopedias, or romper room which disappoints me, I love wrong. <laughs> Members of this year's freshman class, most of them born in 1994, are probably the most tribal generation in history, and they despise being separated from contacts with friends. They prefer to watch television everywhere, except on the television, have seen a woman leave the U.S. State Department for most of their lives, and can carry books those that, those that are not on their e-readers in backpacks that roll. The class of 2016 was born the year of the professional baseball strike, and so like the rest of us, never saw the World Series. And the year for the, and the last year for the NFL to have a football franchise in Los Angeles. They have spent much of their lives helping their parents understand that you don't take pictures on film in that CDs and DVDs are not tapes. Those parents have been able to review the crime statistics for the colleges their children have applied to and then pop in a lead as needed. In these students' lifetimes, with MP3 players and iPods, they seldom listen to car radios. A quarter of the entering students already have suffered some hearing loss. <clears throat> Ephesians 2, 11 to 22. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one, and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in the body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him we have both access to the Father by one Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens of God's people, and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. And the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit.
Executive Vice President Brianna Hoffman, Vice President of Finance Samantha Anderson, and Vice President of Communication Melissa Whitfield. We will work in many different ways to be advocates for the student body and to improve the quality of life on this campus, especially concentrating on making new suites feel welcome at Bethany. Our freshman class comes to us from 13 states, including 52% from Kansas, 16% from Colorado, and 10% from Texas and California. We also welcome freshmen from Spain, Canada, Scotland, and Kosovo. Our transfer students come from 14 states, including 35% from Kansas and California. We welcome transfer students from New Zealand, Israel, Spain, Scotland, and Brazil. Throughout this year, we will inevitably face trials and tribulations as a community and in our own lives. I've always felt that the Bethany community to be a family, and in times of trouble, we must look to our brothers and sisters for strength. Do not be afraid to ask for help, and do not hold back when you are moved to lend a hand. The sense of hospitality and servant leadership that resides in all of us is what makes this college great, and it will be, and it will be what gets us through the rough patches and into better times. Good luck, and have a great year.
promoted from assistant professor to associate professor of education and awarded tenure. Dr. David Slack, associate professor of athletic training, is awarded tenure. Dr. Marley Sue Holmquist, promoted to associate professor from associate professor to professor of education. Professor Mary Kay, promoted to associate professor from associate professor to professor of art. Mary Kay will be teaching in the spring. Dr. Warnell Lockyer, promoted from associate professor to professor of chemistry. Thank you very much. Distinguished professorships are ordinarily awarded to a tenured faculty member in recognition of high quality of scholarly and educational work. The usual term of an award is two years and includes a modest honorarium. The following professors have been appointed a new or are continuing as distinguished professors. Robert Carlson, professor of business, is newly appointed as the Oscar D. Nelson Distinguished Professor of Business through 2014-15. Bruce Taylor, Professor of History, is newly appointed, and Margaret H. Mountcastle, Distinguished Professor of Humanities through 2014-15. Professor Taylor is on sabbatical this, this semester. Warnell Lockyer, Professor of Chemistry, has been reappointed as the Mildred Riddle McEwen Distinguished Professor of Science through 2013-14. Dan Masterson, Associate Professor of Music and Piano, is newly appointed as the Curie Distinguished Professor of Music through 2014-15. Dr. Masterson is also on sabbatical this semester. Ed Poe, Professor of Art, has been reappointed the Minchenbach Distinguished Professor of Art through 2013-14. Jeffrey Wall, Assistant Professor of Music Choral, continues as the Elmer F. Pearson Distinguished Professor of Music through this year. Thank you. We also want to recognize the recipient of the Mortlet Award for the last academic year. The Mortlet Award is given to a faculty member who has made a distinct difference in the teaching climate of the college in such areas as model classroom teaching, distinctive teaching methodology, creative course development, and or campus leadership and institutional support. The Mortlet Award for 2011-12 was announced at the faculty staff appreciation event last spring. The recipient was Robert Carlson, Professor of Business. Faculty members will be on sabbatical leave during this year, academic year. Dr. Bruce Taylor, Professor of History, will be on sabbatical for the fall and interterm. Professor Ed Poe, Professor of Art, will take his sabbatical during the interterm in spring. Dr. Dan Masterson, Professor of Music, will be on leave for the full academic year. Welcome back from sabbatical. Professor of English, Dr. Tristan Van Tessa. As we start a new year at Bethany, you have all probably, probably been thinking about what path you want to follow in the coming months or years. Faculty have mapped out their syllabi for classes, staff have charted their paths, and students are ready to navigate all the courses, involvements, and organizations that can fit into their schedules. Bethany offers a wealth of engagement opportunities for students to discover more about their interests and find their path. This morning, we have the pleasure of hearing from an alumnus who found his path at Bethany by taking advantage of all that Bethany offers. Sean Patty graduated in 1986, where he focused on economics and business, but that wasn't his only passion while here. 
He also took courses all over campus, especially in political science. Additionally, Sean was a member of the football team and the starting quarterback his senior year, earning academic All-American and All-Conference honors. The broad opportunities Sean explored at Bethany allowed him to excel in many different environments after graduation. He earned his MBA from Indiana University. He has worked in banking, management consultancy, broadband communications, and video monitoring, monitoring technology, and presently owns a food service equipment supply company. He has also continued to support Bethany, including being a founding member of the Bethany Athletic Association, and he earned the Bethany Athletic Association Award of Merit last year. Finally, let me share with you personally how smart Sean is. Sean's wife, who could not be with him today, grew up in West St. Louis County and is a graduate of Parkway West High School. She was a competitive swimmer and a member of a state championship team. Likewise, I know how smart my wife is because she married someone who grew up in West St. Louis County, is a graduate of Parkway West High School, was a competitive swimmer, and was a member of a state championship team. So we married well, didn't we, Sean? Please welcome our speaker, alumnus Sean Patton. I'm uh, really flattered and in honor to be here today. And so many familiar faces. Um, I will say that uh, you're, you're a president quite an athlete, and uh, I, I notice you can tell you what year that he was a state champion. Uh, I won't either. Before, before I get going, though, I wanted to recognize uh, three people that had a profound impact on my life while at Bethany, and that things turns out well beyond. Uh, Joyce Pig, coaches Gary Sambo, and Ted Kessler. Thank you, Dean. You guys. With a show of hands, let's see who we have in the room. With freshmen, raise your hands for me. Okay, we'll do the group. All right, sophomore. Junior. A lot of juniors. Seniors. That includes fifth year seniors. <laughs> okay, good, thank you. As a student, do you ever wonder why you're here? In other words, why did you choose Bethany? It's a fair question. You had lots of college choices. Small schools, big schools, ROI schools, close to home schools. Specialized schools. For some reason, you chose Bethany. So, how should you feel about that choice? Of course, since they chose me to speak, you can probably guess my position on the matter. I've got good news for you. I'm here to tell you that of all the choices that you've made already, you chose well in your college selection. I believe that because I believe that Bethany can provide you with an exceptional education and life experience that will allow you to accomplish nearly any vocational goal and personal endeavor. Now that's, that's a tall order. My job today is to give you some perspective on that opinion. First, let me summarize a few of my professional adventures. Throughout my career, I've been blessed with the opportunity to lead dozens of employees, to buy and manage my own businesses, consult to a wide range of companies, assist with the funding of multiple ventures, and my favorite, work with some exceptional people. I got my start working for a business consulting firm in St. Louis, which was a result of a senior internship. After a couple of years, I went back to get my MBA. Not long after graduate school, it, it was time for me to venture out on my own. 
with a partner at age 27, I co-founded a consulting company. I remember my father-in-law being slightly more interested in me making a living for his daughter than exercising my entrepreneurial streak. I got over that. I went, in, went on to buy a healthcare business, became a CFO of a wireless telecom startup, Dr. Leonard mentioned, and later served as a CEO of an early stage tech company. We grew from eight to 30 employees over five years. Real thrill for me. Today, I co-own a small services business and manage my own investment banking practice. I serve on the board of a couple different company, companies as well as the Salvation Army of the Greater St. Louis region. All of that sounds great, maybe, to you. But my story would be incomplete if I didn't share that I also had a few professional challenges along the way. Sometimes you don't hear about those. Let me tell you, failure will put you to the test. You draw down on all those relevant life experiences when that happens. For me, many of them were from athletics. The truth of the matter is that my failure provided some of my best learning opportunities. Don't be afraid to fail. Oddly enough, my Bethany experience started in Ottawa, Kansas, where I grew up. Lots of stories about how I ended up here, but I've only got 35 minutes to talk to you this morning, so I'm going to pull off on that. My dad, that was a joke. <laughs> My dad was an English professor at Ottawa University, and both parents were big readers and encouraged us to explore and pursue our vocational interests wherever that took us. Both preached the virtues of, get ready, liberal arts. Now let's stop right here. I bet the seniors in this room have heard liberal arts while well, at Bethany. That, that phrase, how many times? 200? Enough already with the liberal arts, okay? What does it really mean? Well, here's a definition for you. The academic course of instruction at a college intended to provide general knowledge in comprising the arts, humanities, natural sciences, and social sciences as opposed to professional or technical subjects. Yeah, but will it get me a job? It seems awful squishy, doesn't it? Can I compete with my peers from other colleges? That's the real question. During college, I was sometimes envious of my peers at other schools with areas of study that would apparently lead right into a job, maybe nursing or engineering. I kept wondering, am I missing something? Initially, Bethany for me represented a chance to play football. I wouldn't fully understand until later all the other benefits that came with my college decision. I showed up with literally no idea of what my major should be. Fortunately, I was assigned by Dr. Joyce Pig. Now my encouragement for you students today is to get to know your faculty, your coaches, it's one of the real treasures of Bethany College. Dr. Pig was a wonderful vocational advisor, teacher, academic mentor, and a friend as the years went on. She helped me understand that it's possible to disagree about politics and other touchy subjects, but still have a meaningful dialogue. I'm waiting for her to reverse her position on several things. <laughs> I carried two majors when I was here because I couldn't decide. And maybe I thought majors were really important. Business Econ is one and Political Science History the other. Until my final semester, ended up with the Business Econ because of the job that I was interested in. During my Bethany time, I attended a semester in Washington, D.C., traveled to Sweden, football team, and completed an internship that led to that first job. I'd encourage you to go out and take advantage of all these other external things that you can do while it does. 
when I showed up at my first job with a business consulting firm in St. Louis, I actually realized how little I knew about business. I was a little disappointed. Of course, I knew the basics of economics, accounting, and finance, but I had something even more valuable. My secret weapon was that I knew how to read, write, and calculate, and to think. Okay, let's get off of me for a minute. Let's talk about you and this world that you're about to go into. Some of you have sooner than others. In case you've been under a rock, our world is changing just a little bit. You may have heard that we are living in exponential times. Just a few items for you to consider. You may have heard some of these. For instance, China will soon become the largest English-speaking country. We have five times the number of English words today than during Shakespeare's era. Publication called Science Daily recently reported that a lab test used to detect disease and perform biological research could be made more than three million times more sensitive because of nanotechnology. How about the Arab Spring and the related uprisings? The related dynamic political and socioeconomic shifts that we're seeing in the Middle East and Europe. Europe's a whole other topic. For the first time in US history, once you millennials enter the workforce, you'll be one of four generations working How do you get ready for all this? Millennials, also referred to as the, the Gen Y group, that's you. You tend to be optimistic, have confidence, and tendencies towards teamwork and community. That's good. You'll need those traits. Perhaps more importantly, you'll be required to adapt and to think. And by the way, by 2020, not that long from now, the millennials, that's you, will represent about 40% of the workforce. So I want to share with you five observations that I've made about this world as it relates to preparation of college and just general preparation. This is not exhaustive, just a few things to consider. Writing matters. Yikes, some of you are crawling under your chair. It's true. I mentioned I had went to get an MBA, and I can tell you with certainty that Bethany provided me an education that forced me, required me to write. And I was, even people that might be, have been smarter, superior to me in other areas, I could write better than that in graduate school. It didn't make me better, just more capable. Today, I find myself shouldering projects because I'm the one that can write. And it takes work. I'm not a natural writer. But with hard work, writing is important. Here's what tech industry CEO Kyle Winans said in the Harvard Business Review. He's the CEO of a couple different companies. This article reappeared in the Wall Street Journal recently. Here's what he says. Everyone who applies for a position at either of my companies takes a mandatory grammar test. Grammar is relevant for all companies. Yes, language is constantly changing, but that doesn't make grammar unimportant. Good grammar is credibility, especially on the internet. And blog posts on Facebook statuses and emails and on company websites, your words are all you have. And this is favorite part of it. They are a projection of you in your physical absence. And, he continues, for better or worse, people judge you if you spell, punctuate, and generally write well. I found that people who make fewer mistakes on a grammar test also make fewer mistakes when they're doing something completely unrelated to writing. I thought that was interesting. Number two, critical thinking is rare. And what do we mean by critical thinking? Here's a fancy definition for you. Critical thinking is 
the intellectually disciplined process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, blah, blah, blah. Really, let me boil it down for you. Can you solve problems? Better yet, can you define the problem? Do you understand the other side of the argument? Can you think conceptually? Do you ask questions? That's a critical thing. Number three, interesting people flourish. Make yourself interesting. For some of you, that may be harder than for others. No finger pointing. A colleague of mine who regularly hires millennials said this to me recently. He looks for kids who are interested. What does that really mean? What we're saying is that people who have some depth, some breadth, they learn to converse across a broad base of subjects. Read a nonfiction book once in a while, or take a class outside your major. If you're a music major, go to an athletic event. If you're an athletic event, go to a concert. Like it or not, depth of personality and likability are reasons people get hired. I don't want to make this exclusively about the workforce, as important as that may be. Making yourself interesting might just also make you a better friend or a better parent as well. Number four, you may end up with a different vocation than when you started. About a year after I got out of Bethany, I sat for and passed the CPA exam. I had to take accounting classes in St. Louis to just be able to sit for that exam. And if you would have told me in college that I would have done that, I might have had an argument. I hired a guy recently for the service company that we mentioned, a guy by the name of Ray. Ray was a music major from a Missouri institution. He got out, decided he did not want to teach. He drove a school bus, became a school bus mechanic. That wasn't enough for Ray, so Ray learned how to be a riverboat pilot. He then went back and got an MBA in finance. Ray has been the best employee that I've had. Today's top jobs might not have even been around a few years ago. As one writer puts it, we're preparing kids for jobs that don't yet exist to use technologies that haven't been invented in order to solve problems that we don't even know exist. Number five, be ready for change. Or perhaps just be ready. We've already talked about some of the things going on in today's world. I mentioned that I served as a tech company CEO. On the topic of change, I was hired by this company the day before 9-11. Now this company had an airport security project, a product. A lot of purchase orders in the pipeline. Some of you guys are too young, but 9-11 was a major game changer in our world and certainly in the security industry. Some said, wow, that's great, 9-11 happened, this company's product will go crazy. Well, it didn't, it just did the opposite. We had to re reinvent our entire business plan. We had big customers that were rescinding their purchase orders to us. The government took over security and it was a totally new game. That was change. Now, each one of these five areas that I mentioned, writing, critical thinking, breadth, vocational, Versatility, and what I'll call change management, are disciplines and characteristics in which Bethany's environment flourishes. Again, congratulations for your choice to attend Bethany. But your import, important choice did not end with this decision. You see, you're accountable for extracting all these wonderful professors, but, but all these wonderful professors, coaches, and staff have to give. We all might make choices every day. What path are you choosing? I 
truly believe that Bethany is a special place to build a foundation for a career and a life. Go pile up some good choices and even have a little fun while you're at it. And before closing, I have to share a critical piece of background that holds my whole world together. Although a Christ follower as a child, I've been on a wonderful faith journey over the past few years. A faith journey that was encouraged and strengthened by my, my coach at Kesper. You see, we've got this God that is really big. And he created this whole universe. Somehow he knows each one of us. And he pursues us relentlessly. He's real and he's alive. And I pray that his love and grace is revealed to each one of you. Thank you so much for the chance to come. Have a great day. Thank you, Sean, for those incredibly inspiring words. Sean will be with us through lunch and we'll be in the Levine room, so I would extend an open invitation to anyone to drop in and say hi to Sean or to join us for lunch. Sean, again, thanks. Bethany is very proud of what you've accomplished. Please stand as you are able for the singing of the alma mater and the benediction and remain in your seats until the same party and faculty have Thank you.